Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. The prophet was speaking not about a God who is in some faraway place, but a God who is near us, who comes to be with us in our work, our play, our times together as a family. We light the second candle to show that through Jesus, God came to dwell among and is present with us even now. Join me. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile there until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. We invite you to stand as we uh, join together in our call to worship. Listen deep. Listen with your eyes and your ears. Listen with your heart. To the angels' whispers and voices and dreams, to love hidden in the stillness of a star filled night, to the peace that does not come wrapped in box. For the joy that lingers after the carols are sung. To the longing of your heart, to the echoes of God's love, listen to you. Let's join together in our opening prayer. We come to praise you, O Lord, and to thank again about your love for the world as revealed in your gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. Open our spiritual eyes that we may see and understand the full meaning of the coming of the Savior for us all. In his name, Amen. Our first hymn is uh, number 196, uh, Come Thou Long Expecting Jesus. concerns and share them with each other and with God. Uh, do we have any that we want to uh, lift up this morning? 
The latest word was that Vicki was getting to come home under certain restrictions. She has to go every day and have chest x-rays. And of course they sent a ton of prescription medicine with her. Mm -hmm. So she has to check in every day, you know, keep a close eye on her. But she is, uh, she is doing a little better. Doing better. Doing better. I understand that uh, Toby is uh, motoring around now. He is. He's doing well too. And Cooper is better. He's been sick. Cooper's been sick as well. When it rains, like, oh, yeah. 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 Wonder who's taking care of the cattle. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, uh, we, we're grateful that her, uh, she's doing better, and we're grateful that uh, God is using her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, prayers for Laura Beth, and she's going to be having her wisdom teeth out on Tuesday. <coughs> Who is Laura Beth? Oh, God. <coughs> Have that done. That's not, that's not fun. <laughs> so she's having her wisdom to be removed. Laura Beth. That hurts. Lord, in your mercy. There are. Is there an update on Raymond? He's still the same. same. Yeah. He did, with physical therapy this week, he did start using his feet. <coughs> Instead of his hands on his using the wheelchair, so that was a huge. Also, I understand uh, Shirley Weathers is in the hospital, was in the hospital, and she's in the nursing home in Mount Hazard. Uh, and so we we hope her uh, she adjusts to that new environment. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And also, I had a text message from Sherry this morning. Uh, the hunters arrived home at 3.15 this morning, and so that's why they're, that's why. they're not here. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that they're slackers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, with three of you, you had two or three hours sleep. You did. That's no excuse, but I didn't get to sleep until about 3.30 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll, uh, we'll wish them rest, and, and I'll let you take a nap during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I have that schedule for about 2 o'clock this so. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, Jerome uh, got out and came up to the coffee with the pastor on Thursday. Yay. So, uh, he's a, I don't know if his daughters know he's driving or not. But apparently he is. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's getting around a little bit better. So thankful, thankful for healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. His dog Lucy knows he's better. <laughs> and that's in trouble. But his dog Lucy is better because he's home. That's right. Mom's been out of the hospital for two weeks now, but she does not want to get out of bed. And it's been really rough arguing with her about she needs to get up. We'll, uh, we'll pray for extra strength for uh, for her and for you. Or get a vaccine. I won't say anything. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Your Here are prayers. I know. Uh, Levon has a birthday this week. Is she listening? She's, she's listening. She's, she's, she's listening. Uh huh. Her birthday, her birthday is tomorrow. Her birthday is tomorrow, so we're going to sing to her on the internet. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Yes. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Orlando. Happy birthday to you. And many more. If she's going to have a listen 
key taken out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't fix it K4 on Thursday. No, no that's Orbit. No, Lorbet's March. My grandmother was busy that week. Let's take a moment to put ourselves in the presence of God. Lord, we're tired. We're tired of sickness and of tragedy. We're tired of war. We're tired of the economic forces that push us around. We're tired of people who deceive and destroy. We want a moment of peace. We want a Savior who can bring us peace. And just in time, you send us the Prince of Peace. Help us to see the hope of the world in the manger. He came to heal the sick and the brokenhearted. He came to lift up those who are pushed down pushed out. He's still doing that. Show us where he's working so that we can join him. Move in our hearts so that we are moved towards peace. And as we are moved, the world becomes a little closer to that peace. We're ready to have Christ come. But then again, we're not ready. This hour, help us to get ready for Christmas. In the power and the peace of the baby, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I understand Lowell's going to sing this morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or his representative. <laughs> <laughs> special I'm listening. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he said it's easier for me to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
someone reading today? I am. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> moving slowly. <laughs> Those last notes die a waste. <laughs> okay, the reading today is um, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. The Peaceable Kingdom. A shoot shall come out of, from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fat lay together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, the nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And on that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples of the nations, shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. These, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our psalm today is number 72 on page 795. We'll use a different response from the ones in the book, and the words are just, uh, people look east, the time is near. <laughs> and it goes like this. People look east, the time is near. O God, in your righteousness to the royal son, may he judge your people with righteousness, and your poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. While the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound, till the moon be no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. People of peace, the time is near. May his foes bow down before him, and his enemies lift the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations serve him. For he delivers the needy when they call the poor, and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy. And saves the lives. And saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life. And precious is their blood in his sight. People of peace, the time is near. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all the day. May there be abundance of grain in the land. May it wave on the tops of the mountains, 
May his fruit be like Lebanon. And may they blossom forth in the cities like the grass of the fields. May his reign endure forever. His fame continue as long as the sun. May the people bless themselves by him. All nations call him blessed. Church uh, founding in America, they, they did a national service, and this was the hymn that they sang, one of the hymns at Christmas. So uh, enjoy it. It has a long history and it's a beautiful hymn. kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the, the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John was clothed, uh, wore clothing of camel's hair and leather belts around his waist. 
and his food was locusts and honey, wild honey. And the people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to, to him, and all the region among, along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when they saw, he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I told you, uh, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. Even then, now the axe is, is lying at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His will before is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and will gather his wheat to the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I enjoy watching nature shows. I enjoy hearing descriptions of the migration patterns of monarchs. I enjoy hearing about the fish that are on the Great Barrier Reef. I don't enjoy so much when the lion chases down the gazelle. I'm not too fond of when the alligator grabs the water buffalo. I know that happens in nature. I know it's part of the process of life at one generation to feeding the, the next generation of people, of animals trying to survive. I know that. It's part of the balance of nature for life to continue, but I don't want to watch it. Maybe that's why the story of the peaceable kingdom is so compelling to me. To have the lion and the lamb lay down together. To have the wolf eat straw rather than others. To have children that are safe even around snakes. I also know it's not possible. Not under our certain present circumstances. You can't breed the aggression out of predators. It's in their DNA. It's what naturally comes to them. Any more than you can breed fear out of the prey. That's how they try to stay alive, by being alert and afraid of the predator and avoiding them as much as possible. But Isaiah saw a different world. Maybe he was tired. Maybe he was tired of war. Maybe he was tired of tragedy, loss of life to so many close to him. Maybe he was tired of bad leaders, of people who led them away from God, of people who deceived and used their power for their own benefit. I could see where Isaiah wanted that. Also knowing that he couldn't do it. That's something only God can do. But he envisioned the kingdom of God as being like that peaceable kingdom where there were no prey and no predators. I think we can understand what he was feeling. I think we get tired of war. We get tired of disease. We get tired of school shooting. We get tired of politicians who deceive 
and grab for power and try to benefit themselves and make everybody feel afraid of something else. We would really long for a peaceable kingdom. A time when there wasn't any such thing. Isaiah saw a leader who would lead them into that kind of kingdom. A Messiah, a royalty that would be good and wise and deep in the ways of God. But we also know that that's not possible. Not for us. Human beings are fragile. They're prone to self-centeredness. They're prone to want more power. They're prone to deceive. Even the good leaders sometimes fail. Have their moral breakdowns like David did. Maybe he had somebody in mind. Maybe he saw a young prince who was born as a baby and he thought that prince was going to be the one who could establish justice, who would treat the poor fairly, who would lift up those who were pushed down, who would do the way of God. What he didn't see was Jesus. Sometimes they give prophecies. Prophets would see one thing, but behind that, beyond that, is another reality, is a real Savior that's sent by God, the Son of God. He didn't see that. What he could see was that God could do things that would change the world. John the Baptist, I don't think, saw Jesus either. He saw the kingdom of God. He saw the Messiah coming. Uh, but later on, he would ask Stephen's disciple to ask Jesus, are you the one? He didn't see Jesus, but God did. God sent Jesus into the world as a baby to change the world. Now, John paints a picture of wrath, and that doesn't jive very well with the peaceable kingdom, does it? How do you put those two together? That's quite a question. And then I thought about the examples that he uses. He said the axe is to the tree. Now I thought about that. Why do you cut down a tree? One thing is to make something useful. People need tables, people need chairs, people need houses. It improves humanity. Maybe that's why you cut down a tree. You cut down a tree sometimes uh, to make space for farming, for gardens, for things that grow, for things that help the community. And sometimes you cut down a tree because of forest management, because you want new growth to come up. You want the old growth to be taken out so it doesn't cause fires. You're making the world better. And I thought about, what is Christianity? We're in the business of making the world better. We're in the business of helping. We're in the business of transformation, of transforming people who are self-centered and sometimes destructive into people who are loving and other-centered. We want to transform selfish people into other-centered people. That's what we do. And that's why they cut down the tree. I think of the second example of the, the wheat and the, the, the chaff that's a chaff, chaff uh, that's around the, the, the grain of wheat. Now I thought, when the wheat and the chaff grow together, they form a mutual uh, beneficial thing. They, they, the chaff, I assume, protects the seed and so that it can grow. But at some point, it's no longer useful. It, it causes a... It, 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 keeps them from creating food, creating the bread you have to separate it. And so the will of for it is to throw the wheat up in the air and so that the chaff will blow away and the wheat will fall down. Now, 
I would bet that a loaf of bread would cost ten dollars a loaf if we did read that way now. But it shows that sometimes that which was constructed becomes destructive and has it gets in the way of what the wheat can be. I was thinking of human beings as well. That sometimes things get in our way. Block us from being our best self. Block us from being connected to God. And sometimes that has to be separated. Sometimes you have to create something better for the community. Bread that's edible and shareable. So maybe he's not talking about judgment. Maybe he's talking about that which needs to be removed that inhibits what can be. So what? We always have to ask that question, don't we? We take the gospel, we take the, the, the things we say in church, the things we say in Sunday school, and we, and we pray and read on the scriptures and say, so what? So I don't think that God is a wrathful God. God is preparing us for the peaceable kingdom. He's separating those things from us that are destructive and don't fit. The Savior is born. He's the Prince of Peace. He brings about that kind of world. We can't do it. God can. We can't transform the world, but God can. So what's our job? Our job is to remove the things in our lives that keeps us from being the best we can be, the closest we can be to God, the most helpful to our neighbors. So part of our work in Advent is to prepare our hearts and minds for the one who brings the peace of the kingdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we hear the word of God, as we feel God's presence, we uh, affirm our faith. We're going to be using number 881 in the back of the hymn of the, the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the great and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Father, you've given us a gift that we could not get for ourselves, a peaceable kingdom, because that's our goal, because that's the goal of history. We give of that which we have to further that goal, to nudge us a little closer to Christmas and to the kingdom. In Christ's name we pray.
turn to page 12 in the front of the hymnal for the service of the word and chapter. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, earnestly repent of their sin, seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Help us toward our obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take your own petition to God. Here's the good news. Christ died for you all, uh, for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take me, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink Drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out the Holy Spirit on those gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We take the bread as Jesus did so long ago and made it a sacrament of his presence, which we can partake in. We break the bread so that we can eat it, but also to remember his brokenness for our sake. We lift up the cup and it asks his blessing upon it 
Let it become for us a source of healing and wholeness, a source of forgiveness, a source of love. Let us pray. Lord, our eyes have not seen the peace that you offer. Our hearts have not felt the full joy that you have. May we touch upon it this Christmas and celebrate the presence of Jesus then and now. May we partake of this meal where he is the host and calls us to eat with him. Share in the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will those who will be assisting please come? Jesus has come, and he is coming, and he's here with us now. Come, enjoy his feast. Please come. Uh, we finally came to a hymn, Christmas Carol, we know. <laughs> the way of the manger, let us sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
great joy. Jesus Christ is coming again this year. Let's sing our blessing. Serve the Lord.